so today's topic tinea worms also known as uh, tinea saginata and tinea solium <coughs> and we're going to learn them side by side because most of them uh, most of their features are almost same so we will compare and contrast and try to learn about them so let us start so tinea saginata and tinea solium uh, tinea saginata is known as beef tap worm while solium is known as pork tap worm and this is because of uh, their intermediate host the intermediate host for tinea saginata is cow and for solium it is pig and that's why they're called uh, beef tap worm and pork tap worm respectively Saginata is also known as unarmed tapworm because uh, their head uh, does not contain the hooklets or what we know as uh, scolex is lacking the uh, hooks while solium will contain the row of hooklets and that's why we call it as armed tapworm geographical distribution is worldwide for both of them uh, the saginata in india it is common in muslims because uh, they consume the beef while it is uncommon in muslims uh, in case of tinea solium because they do not uh, eat uh, pork <coughs> habitat uh, in human is usually the small intestine the upper jejunum uh, is the habitat uh, of the adult worm in the human beings so morphological features so there are three morphological forms adult worm egg and larva so let us compare the adult worm of tinea saginata with tinea solium the lifespan as you can see the solium lives longer up to 25 years compared to 10 years of tinea saginata tinea saginata is much more longer as you can see 24 meters while solium is uh, shorter 2 to 3 meters the shape of head is a uh, quadrate it is more like uh, this kind of shape uh, of head in case of uh, saginata while it is kind of globular in case of uh, solium and uh, there is no rostellum or no hooklets just four suckers are there and uh, so i have shown one two and three here and fourth one is behind so there are four circular suckers for attachment so same four suckers are uh, present in uh, solium but it also had a cap like structure along with hooklets uh, that is known as rostellum with uh, alternating long and large uh, shaped hooklets the neck is longer compared to the solium in case of saginata because uh, it is much more longer so obviously the segments are more than 1000 in case of um, saginata while they are less than 1000 in case of solium the length of uh, the segment so these are much more longer length is four times the breadth in case of uh, uh, saginata and the genital pore is at posterior end and it alternates irregularly for example these are the segments so it is at posterior end and it alternates from right and left and like zigzag pattern and here in uh, solium it is in middle and uh, alternate irregularly between right and, and left now vaginal sphincter is present in case of saginata while it is absent in case of solium uh, the main feature is by which we usually differentiate uh, the worm of saginata and solium is this that the uterine branches the uterine branches are more than 10 uh, so uterus is a central structure and these lateral branches if you count them they're usually more than 10 in case of saginata while they are less than 10 in case of solium 
now because it has a vaginal sphincter the gravid segments are expelled singly forcibly through this sphincter and they oviposits on perianal scale while crawling out while because there is no sphincter here segments can easily passively expelled in chain of five to six so you will see um, the single segments usually in case of saginata while if you see segments uh, in bunch of five or six that is usually in case of solium it is seen but it is not uh, kind of very strict rule so yes as you can see uh, here diagrams are reversed here it is solium here it is saginata you can see quadrate head with four suckers here four suckers with rostellum and hooklets are seen uterine branches are less than 10 later uterine branches are more than 10 you can see segments the segments are more in number and it is much longer uh, warm. if we compare egg then egg is almost same for both of them it is spherical or brown it does not float um, inner to out if you see there is an oncosphere an oncosphere contains embryo with uh, one two and three pairs of hooklets and there is an outer thin transparent eggshell uh, which causes which is not shown here which causes clumping and between this and this there is another inner layer so there is an outer layer and there is an inner layer inner layer is striated uh, radial striations are seen and it is known as embryo 4 now how we can differentiate uh, these two eggs there is only one point by which you can differentiate them is by doing one percent uh, acid fast staining or sudden staining of stool and if eggs are acid fast especially the hooklets then you can say that it is tenia saginata while soliums they are usually non acid fast the larval structure the larval structure of saginata is known as cysticercus bovis while the the same of that in solium is known as cysticercus cellulose now larva form is usually seen in intermediate host so intermediate host in case of bovis is cow while that for sorry for a solium is pig or man and obviously uh, the cysticercus any structure contain the future scolax head invaginated to one side the lifespan is almost eight months in flesh so the long axis of cyst they sorry here the diagram showing the long axis of muscle fiber and as you can see the long axis of cyst also lies parallel to it so let us start with the life cycle which is the main part to learn any parasite and for that first we have to know which are the hosts so definitive host for both of them is men but intermediate host is cow in case of saginata while that of pig uh, which is optimum host and man which is usually the accidental host in case of uh, solium the mode of infection is obviously ingestion for both of them here obviously you will eat undercooked beef here you will eat undercooked pork and the larval form will be the uh, infective form so here cysticercus bovis and here the cysticercus cellulose is the infective form uh, for humans uh, the eggs uh, can also be uh, infective form so ingestion of cysticercus by definitive host uh, and obviously uh, that is a mode of infection is uh, ingestion and infective form is cysticercus which is larval form and we the definitive host will eat it and this uh, larval form 
uh, which has a invaginated skull exit the head will come out and con as soon as it comes in contact with bile then it will attach itself with help of suckers to the gut wall and then it develop into adult worm so adult worm in small intestine usually upper jejunum so it has reached to its habitat it will mature there releases the eggs in feces we know how eggs look like they are spherical brown structure inner embryo four three pairs of hooklets inside it and outer layer and these eggs are in fact to form for intermediate host so they are ingested by them the embryo four gets released uh, into the gut and oncosphere is liberated penetrate the gut wall enter into portal vessel go to the liver right heart lung left heart and enter into systemic circulation to en get enclosed in muscles where it develops into the full form larval stage so mode of infection uh, is ingestion infective form is cysticercus larva and so let us start with this so mode of infection is ingestion of larva the larva will go to the small intestine and develop into adult worm which will release the eggs sometimes in feces you will see the segments of adult worm now those eggs they are ingested by the intermediate host which could be cow or pig depending on it is which worm and then this oncosphere gets liberated from this larva uh, 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 sorry from the egg and it becomes the encysted larva which is known as cysticercus in case of intermediate host so what is the pathogenicity pathogenicity is usually by adult worms and we know adult worms are in small intestine so it causes uh, the GI disturbances along with anemia uh, but as human tend to be intermediate host in case of tenia solium so the cysticercus form especially the cysticercus cellulose in case of tenia solium it gets developed into various tissues uh, muscle eye brain and for example, here uh, you can see a calcified cyst on routine x-ray of human leg. You can see the same type of uh, cyst in brain tissue on CAT scan. So how we can do laboratory diagnosis? Uh, you can either show eggs or segments in stool or you can take a swab. Uh, and if it is acid fast egg, you can see it is saginata. If it is non-acid fast egg, you can say it is uh, solium. Yes, PCR is available uh, and we can uh, do a molecular technology based diagnosis also. Uh, but if it is cysticercosis, that means the larval form in human beings in case of tenia solium, then we have to uh, take a biopsy if it is skin which is affected, uh, we can, uh, which will show the larval form. We can also use the serological techniques which either use antibody or antigen detection. Eosinophilia is a non-specific finding which is usually seen in invasive stages of larval form but it is uh, seen in almost any parasitic infection. Uh, X-rays will show you calcified cysticercus as shown earlier but that will be in very old case. If uh, neurocysticercosis is there, you can do CT scan or MRI of brain or even you can take myelography uh, for neurocysticercosis. Here tapworm segments are shown in feces mass. Uh, this is the tenia egg, unstained form. The same eggs are sh shown in biopsy. This is the tenia saginata adult worms, more than 1000 segments. Now here as you can uh, see the central uterus is there and the lateral branches of uterus they are uh, more than 10 uh, here in case of saginata while they are less than 10 in case of solium. Uh, this is the cysticerci uh, of a tenia species found in mesenteries of rabbit. This is the 
Scolex of Tinea saginata. You can see that four suckers are there for attachment. So Tinea saginata treatment is again praziquantel for both of them. Uh, but if it is cysticercosis, then you require uh, very high doses of praziquantel. And if it is affecting brain, then ideally the surgery is the treatment of choice. But uh, if you want to give a medical treatment, then along with praziquantel, you have to add albendazole for one month. Prevention, uh, whatever you eat, cook it. So cook beef or cook pork, uh, you can eat. Better sewage disposal and personal hygiene uh, are obviously better. Thank you.